Hello, I'm Donny Maserati and in this documentary we'll be looking at the truth, the lies, the good, the bad and the downright ugly on one of the UK's biggest industries. This is cosmetic surgery. Cosmetic surgery is the biggest growth industry throughout the world. Each year more and more people in the UK are going under the knife and taking the plunge to create that perfect look. 17 million procedures take place each year around the world. 10% of males take the dive to have an operation, whilst females take the other staggering 90%. The dominant procedure for females is the breast augmentation, which is a quarter of all operations undergone each year. This is followed by the breast reduction coming in at 13% and a tummy tuck at 10%. But what is the perfect look? I wanted to get the public's opinion on cosmetic surgery, so I visited the town of Bromsgrove to get their views on the subject. What is your opinion on cosmetic surgery? I have a mixed opinion. If you need it, I think it should be for people who have had accidents that need it to make their appearance look better. Uh, I don't really have an opinion. I don't think it's wrong. Uh, someone wants to have it done. If they can afford it, that's fine. Um, I don't agree with it um, purely for vanity. I think it's a good thing if people have got low self-esteem and want to go for it and they can afford to do it. That's not, that's not an issue for me. Do you feel it is wrong for people to take loans in order to fund their surgery obsessions? No, as long as I can afford to pay it back, why not? If they can afford to repay the loans, it's not really an issue. No, as long as they can afford to pay the loan back and they're not going to get into debt and default that could cause bigger problems in their life, I, I don't think that's a problem. Celebrities influence our day-to-day -day living, and this is no different in the world of cosmetic surgery. From the weird and the wonderful of the likes of Germ Rivers to Pete Burns, cosmetic surgery can make or break a career. What do you think about this person and why? Well, she's very pretty. I'd say by the looks of it, she's had some sort of some sort of surgery. I don't think she's a natural person, but she's okay. Well, it's gross and it's surgery gone mad, um, and it's not attractive. They just don't look natural. They look plastic and um, overdone by cosmetic surgery. The first major part of my journey took me to London where I spoke to former model, TV personality and body gossip co-captain Natasha Devon on her opinion of cosmetic surgery. What is your opinion on celebrities that have made a career from surgery? Um, it, you can't blame the individual because we live in a world that's allowed that to happen. And we are so endlessly uh, obsessed with bodies. Um, we have created a culture uh, that where heat magazine flies off the shelves, and we only have ourselves to blame for that. So it, the easiest thing to do would be to point at Katie Price and go, what a terrible example of a human being, but she's not. She's just um, playing the card she's been dealt. So uh, my opinion is, again, that it's a, it's a bit of a shame uh, that that we kind of hold these people up in, in such high regard simply because they've been able to make, they borrow, steal the money in order to shape themselves in a certain way. When I left the interview with Natasha Devon, as much as I appreciated her opinion and views, I couldn't help but think I needed a more professional opinion. I needed to get the opinion of someone at the very heart of the industry. So I decided to find a cosmetic surgeon that could give me some answers. The journey to get a professional opinion took me to see Mr Peart, a plastic surgeon that specialises in cosmetic enhancements. Hello, um, so you are a plastic surgeon yeah. and you specialise in rhinoplasty, plastic surgery and cosmetic enhancement. What's the worst that could happen if it all did go wrong for a patient? There have been patients who've died. We know that and it's in the media. There have been patients who've died, for instance, from liposuction, where the liposuction cannula, which is a bit like a, a spear really, can penetrate an organ and cause, uh, cause problems. So the worst that can happen is, yes, a patient can die. But these are very, very, very rare complications, yeah. So um, there are others that are also 
potentially crippling, but again, they're rare. I mean, there's a record of somebody who's had eye surgery, eyelid surgery, cosmetic surgery, and who became blind. Do you feel that celebrities have a great influence in the industry? Absolutely. They have an increasingly huge influence, and you know that, because the media focuses so much on celebrities. They are our role models, really, and uh, so their influence is absolutely huge. Um, a lot of people use uh, cosmetic surgery as a quick fix. Is it really a quick fix? Well, it's not. I think that this is a very important reality about the whole thing. It can only fix a little bit in terms of your life. That's the thing. People, people say, oh, if I just had this one procedure, then I'd be happy. But there's no quick fix for, for low self-esteem. You'll be much better at spending your time and energy working on liking yourself as you are, because then job done and you can get on with your life. People who rely on cosmetic surgery to make themselves happy run a huge risk of being internally unhappy. There are many things to life and living and happiness that are not related to how you know, beautiful you look. Yeah. Do you think people can take things too far when Absolutely. altering their image? Absolutely. We can see so many examples of it. It's not difficult to go onto the internet and find extraordinary outcomes from people who've had too much cosmetic surgery. They look alien, they don't look like they don't belong on the planet, to be honest. And uh, one of the most difficult things for these people to appreciate is where do you stop? So I interviewed the surgeon, I had learnt that most of the myths of surgery being a quick fix and the easy improvements had been proven to be false and there is no such thing as a quick fix. I thought to myself, I have two opinions so far in surgery. I had an opinion against and a professional one, but I wanted to get the opinion of someone of an unbiased source. You have followed me on my journey to discover the truth about cosmetic surgery and Botox. I'm here today to interview a patient of Botox with a twist. Hello Maria. Hi Maria, now you have Botox, but it's not for cosmetic appearance, it's in fact for medical reasons. Would you like to give us a bit of background on this? Yeah, sure. Um, going back 15 years, I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. Um, it's a neurological disease. Um, and a part of the condition, you get symptoms with an overactive bladder, um, which is not very nice at all. You've got no control over it whatsoever. And what the Botox does is actually paralyzes the bladder. So I don't have the urgency so much. As a mother yourself, what would you say to someone who's given their eight-year-old daughter cosmetic surgery vouchers? I think it's disgusting, it's shocking. You might as well say who you are because you've got an ugly child. It's wrong, you know. That how much does that mother think of that child that she's giving them vouchers to make herself look more beautiful? Hideous. Absolutely hideous. Um, oh, yeah, I mean, there are no words, are they? <laughs> are they really? Um, but uh, the kind of um, the insecurity that she that she's planted, you know, in, in her daughter. You know, what is beautiful? You know, surely she should be accepted for who she is. Clearly, you agree with Botox under medical circumstances. But what is your opinion when it comes to people that have it for cosmetic appearance? I, th I think it's wrong, really. I mean, you are who you are. I believe in cosmetic surgery when somebody's had an accident and it's for reconstruction, you know, and for medical reasons, but for appearance, no. I think too much is put on appearance these days with the celebrities, and it's so much pressure on the younger generation, and it's not fair. How do you classify what is beautiful and what is ugly? We are who we are. Thank you, Maria. After interviewing Maria, we have discovered the twist. Before, she could only hold this much in her bladder, and now, thanks to, both, to, thanks to medical Botox, her life has been improved dramatically, being able to hold this amount in her bladder. Maria, have your drugs back. Well, there we have it. We have found the opinions of surgeons, TV personalities, and general Botox patients. And we have discovered that Botox has its uses, 
but it's not all what it's crept up to be. We have successfully changed the appearance of cosmetic surgery.